Okay, hello, and welcome to a short lecture uh, presented by myself, Christian Trey Codman, on a report that I've recently compiled from other peer-reviewed reports. Uh, it's titled, uh, An Assessment of the USGS Shake Alert Earthquake Early Warning System, and uh, let's get started. Uh, here we have information about this report that I compiled uh, from the shakealert.org official website uh, presented by the USGS. They state that within the next 30 years they project a California earthquake has a chance um, above 99% uh, that would be at a magnitude larger than 6.7 and also on the west coast on the Pacific Northwest fault lines that there's a 10% chance of a magnitude 8 or 9 earthquake. The shake alert system that we're talking about, the early earthquake warning system that uh, I'm presenting about today. It's been um, in work since the early 2010s, but it has gained full operational status uh, as of this year, 2021, across California, Oregon, and now Washington. Now in this report, uh, I'm looking for how effective our system of, of shake alert has been uh, in the prototype alert system and um, how it's gone into the full rollout. And uh, we're also looking for how alerts to the general public, um, the usability of them, and how well they are being received. So let's keep going here. Now, ShakeAlert works through FEMA, cellular carriers, and um, depending on what region of the country that we, we have this, uh, availability to detect earthquakes, the um, the notification companies are also a part of this process. Now, um, w what they're trying to do is d detect the, the significant quakes. The smaller ones don't really affect the um, uh, availability for alerts as much, since there's not usually as much damage, if any. Now, this is not an earthquake prediction system. This is basically uh, a a reader, they have detectors across the west coast, for example, that indicates that an earthquake has began and shaking is imminent for those who are within that zone. Now when a shake alert warning is delivered, uh, there's three main messages that they say you will receive. That's the event message, um, which you know gives us where uh, in text form, maybe possibly in a map form. Uh, the epicenter, where the projected epicenter is. There's a contour message that you know gives how far out the range, uh, and usually uh, displayed as a polygon on a map. And then there's also a similar map grid, which might show the intensity per location in um, coinciding with the epicenter. Now, what this allows people to do is either slow or stop trains, taxiing planes on runways, preventing cars from entering bridges or tunnels. Um, there's also dangerous machinery and uh, chemical plants, etc. That you know th these types of places should have some kind of shutdown um, faculties to their elements, and the, those few seconds can be critical at those kind of um, places of employment and um, facilities. In this diagram I, I'm showing here on this slide on the right shows how an epicenter in for example the Cascadia subduction zone where it'll be offshore epicenter so there's going to be a delay in how soon people who are receiving alerts can have either more time or have very few seconds to you know gain their faculties and get to safety. So uh, yeah, for example, here on the far left of the diagram on the right, if the epicenter is offshore, say mm, middle offshore of Oregon, uh, the range of time is going to be about equal to Seattle to Northern California. Now everybody in Oregon coastline is obviously going to feel the shaking very, very soon. Now um, in comparison to an epicenter off of the Northern coast of California, the range of time is going to be much further, say in Seattle. Uh, and then the opposite, if there's an epicenter off of the Washington coast or in the sound area, that the Northern California coast is going to have a delayed 
um, or excuse me, a, a, a much more expanded amount of time before the shaking reaches after the alert itself. Now, the effectiveness of shake alert uh, can be given example from the July 4th earthquake in Ridgecrest, California. And this was the largest event in, I think, 20 years for the SCSN, which is the Southern California Seismic Network. Now, what they got from this earthquake, which was a series of earthquakes over uh, a couple of days, what they saw was that the response time was fast. But the telemetry from um, yeah, the alert itself was giving alerts consistently after that initial earthquake. The uh, next earthquake that they used for um, th th this data and relating to what they can improve on was the 2020 Lone Pine earthquake, which they factored into not being a um, aftershock of the Ridgecrest earthquake earlier in less than a year before. Okay, so since it, it was more of a separate event, they could have you know more uh, individualized results from the data that they were collecting. The um, the response time from the earthquake once it was detected was nine point nine seconds, a few more seconds later than the ridge crest. But uh, they also had an initial location error of about a kilometer away. Uh, now. The Lone Pine Earthquake alert receivers, they did get it through two channels, their smartphone applications and also the uh, WAs. Uh, there was some, you know, some technical issues still with repeating um, alerts after the initial earthquake had happened. So that we're getting alerts for shaking that never came after that initial shaking and alert happened. Uh, knowing that individuals can see the system and react to the alerts to creating the safe environments is is so essential so we know that it works at least from these two uh, previous examples I just went over and and how um, they can relay the data into better preparing for the next time so uh, of course the primary goal developing shake alert was to make sure that it was cost effective and that the processing time for the detections of earthquakes got to the people without you know being inaccurate or non-helpful. Um, one way they were doing this uh, in the improvements was to reduce the number of variables that the system systemic algorithms that they use uh, could calculate where these earthquakes are coming from by where they've seen them at depth before along these specific fault lines. Improving the latency, uh, especially to the SCSN, Southern California Seismic Network, uh, is improving uh, the, the weak radio links. They want to reduce emphasis on the cellular system, which is, you know, more, I guess, digital and compared to analog, where uh, expanding their reliance on these high bandwidth radio connections is going to hold the telemetry of the alerts to a more proper and professional time. Um, in conclusion, uh, it, you know, it's good that <laughs> in, in whatever way we can perceive it that these two earthquakes happened while the system was up and running in the uh, testing phase and that they've gained some improvements from these events, but we're not sure if we're ready for that massive quake yet, whether it be in California or the Pacific Northwest. So all we can do is hope for the best, and I think the shake alert system, at least from this research in my report, uh, shows it can be effective. Thank you very much for watching this, and uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like, uh, share, and please subscribe. Thank you.